Uh, outside at the concourse as you come into this beautiful arena, the uh, Greensboro Coliseum. A lot of work has been done here. This is an ideal spot to hold this tournament. Over 22,000 on hand today as you look at Jeff Jones, the head coach of the Virginia Cavaliers and the starters presented by Boston Market tonight. Harold Dean, well, he's a great free throw shooter. The thing that he would just love to get rid of is a stress fracture that's bothered him all year long. The defensive specialist doesn't get a lot of notoriety, but he should. Okalija, the 6'9 sophomore out of JFK School in Berlin. The charm will jump it up against Carter. And his fourth quarterfinal game is underway. Well, we talked about at the beginning of the telecast how the guards for Virginia have to be able to get opportunities to spread the North Carolina defense and also get to the basket. Harold Dean's a master at that. Six seconds into the ball game, but Okalija picks up the foul. The officials tonight, Larry Rose is the referee. Brian Kersey and Mike Wood are the umpires. Three-pointer on the way, that thing did everything but go down. Well, the reason why the guards have to get started first is because Norman Nolan, the big man for Virginia, has had an excellent two games against Carolina this year. 39 points and 18 rebounds total. He's played his best against the Tar Heels. North Carolina in a 2-3 zone right now. They've played a lot more zone during that stretch. It's been able to conserve energy and also pack it in. Nolan blocked by Jamison. Right there in front of a bunch of the Carolina faithful, and they loved it. Norman Nolan trying to get started here. Drives around Zwicker, but Anton Jameson right there to help. Look at the pressure on Dean. Tipped in the air, turnover. Carolina's got numbers. The pass to the near side as it was deflected. Actually, was not deflected. Touched last by North Carolina. So turnover against the heels as they got the three-on-two break. Mental error by Shimon Williams. He didn't run with Vince Carter. Carter anticipated Williams to keep running. Williams started to flatten out, looking for that jumper instead of making the angle to the basket. Dean, take the shot. He was 23 feet away. Carolina back in man-to-man -man right now. Curtis Staples, the junior from Roanoke, Oak Hill, gets the first points for Virginia, and it's a three-pointer. Virginia in man-to-man, -man, their number one defense. And you see that throughout the evening, raising their fingers. Looks like Nolan is going to pick up the foul. Curtis Staples, great three-point shooter. Take a look at him running around the court, losing his man. He, lead, he leads the conference in three-point field goals made, so he launches an awful lot from that range. These two teams split during the regular season as Carter too hard off the back iron. Okalaji tips the ball back. Jamison jams it home. Wow. What well, a presence. You credit Okalaji with keeping the ball alive. Jamison was blocked off of that play by Norman Nolan. Nolan released because he thought his team had it, but Okalaja made the play to keep it alive. The charm feeds it back outside. Three-pointer lost on the way. And shot it for Dean. But right now, that leg's not bothering Harold Dean. Usually, it'll show up on his jumpers. They'll fall a little short because he can't get enough leg into it. That one was picture perfect. Okalaja for three. That's interesting. The two day games started off a little bit slow this afternoon, and the two night games both have started off on fire shooting. Well, the guys who played the early game were probably a little groggy, didn't have anything to give them a lift. I guarantee you, North Carolina, Virginia, Florida State, Wake Forest, they watched those afternoon games, got them in the mood. Particularly after they saw what happened to the number one seed. Nothing to it. Staples buries another one. Well, Virginia playing his plan, getting their guards off, trying to stretch this floor, stretch the North Carolina defense, and then go to work with Norm Nolan inside. Inside, that's quite a battle going on. I don't know if it's going to be Descharm. I'm sorry, uh, Staples. Curtis Staples picks up the foul. It's his first team second. Meanwhile, inside, Descharm really got a battle going on 
with Antoine Jamison. Coda into the lineup for the first time. Didn't start tonight. Swicker. Jamison with the tip. Antoine Jamison, we're going to watch him throughout the night. Does a great job of getting in position for offensive rebounding by moving without it, setting up. But just as importantly, he knows when his teammates are going to shoot. Alexander off the mark. Zwicker comes away with the carom. And Carolina pushes it up. Coda dishes, and the ball is going to be taken away. Just tried to throw it right through Harold Dean, and he was up to the task as he jumped up and got it out of the air. Well, Dean saved the layup. Antoine Jameson was in the lane by himself. Coda song. Dean for another three. Short. Virginia in a 2-3 zone right now. You can expect them to change the defenses. Again, trying to find the key and hopefully slow down a North Carolina attack. Shot clock is at 14. Another three is launched. It's not there, but inside the rebounding again by Jamison. Boy, how many offensive boards does he have already, Lynn? Three offensive boards for him and Jamison's got six points. Well, I'll tell you, that's work right there. Offensive rebounding is pure effort. It takes some intelligence, but certainly effort is more important than anything else. And no wonder your shooting percentage is so high when you've got that kind of activity going on in the paint. Coda, who has really found himself in this winning streak by Carolina. Inside Zwicker, he doesn't touch anything. The ball tipped up by Jamison. Almost had a chance. Well, you know, Jamison is licking his chops playing against that 2-3 zone. In a zone, it's not a man that you're guarding, but an area. And for offensive rebounders, that's the best thing to see. Shot off the mark by Alexander Courtney. It's difficult to block out when you're playing zone. Shooter's roll wouldn't work for him that time, and out of bounds, touch last by North Carolina. So let's take a break, tied at nine, with 14.41 left until the halftime. Dave Ryan back in the Championship Week studios to the AT&T Big East turn. Here we go. BC and Georgetown semifinals. James Spoonie Penn is running. He's not gunning. He's going to lead for Dwayne Woodward. Great pass for Mickey Curley. He'll finish easily. And it's an 11-point game right now. They look very good. Back to the ACC. So BC off and running in that uh, Big East tournament. Our situation tied at nine apiece. Just under 15 to play. Jamison already with three offensive boards. Well, you, this is a case of knowing your job description. Anton James is not going to hang out looking for the ball. His teammates get it. He's working to get good position. The combination of movement and strength. Here again, going right to the lip. He's pushing. He's shoving. But he's working. You see his numbers as he's getting a breather. Three of four, six points. Virginia is three of six from three-point range. They're all of three on two-point shots. Well, I, I believe that that's going to change a little bit as Carolina comes out to try to honor those three-point shooters. It's going to open it up a little bit more for guys like Norm Nolan. We mentioned before, he's been very effective against Carolina. He's going to do the bulk of the two-point scoring because between Alexander Dean and Staples, they're going to look to hang out and space out right around the three-point area. Matheny in the ball game number 42, 7'4 sophomore out of Charlotte, 236 pounds. Carolina playing the zone right now. Something, as I mentioned before, that they've gone through an awful lot in the second half of the season. Nolan. One of the reasons the zone was spread, there were more creases in it, and Nolan found an opening once he received. That one won't go, and it's going to go back to Virginia. You see Chase Matheny in the game, a 7-4 redshirt sophomore. He's in primarily to present an obstacle to Serge Wicker and also to try to give some help on the defensive board where Anton Jamison was pretty much ruling the roof. Also, you can see number four, Mike Tarjai, in the lineup for North Carolina. 6'9", junior. 
Nolan works against him, takes it deep into the paint. Ricker couldn't help out on that one, and he's got four quick points. I tell you, you can't say enough about Norman Nolan. He worked over the summer, shed some weight, worked on his ball handling skills, and you saw it right there. You get some of the big guys matched up against him who aren't accustomed to moving their feet on the wing, and he's going to walk right around him. Williams back to Coda. Carter flashes in the middle. Knocks down at the 14-footer. He's got two now. Good movement by Carolina. They're in their passing game. Looks like Dean is starting to limp a little bit, doesn't it? It does. And, and as I said, it takes them a while, I guess, once the fatigue factor sets in on that stress fracture. And it's very noticeable. You now, even more noticeable now than it was early is the bounce pass goes to Coda inside. Zwicker hustles and gets the follow. And he goes down in a heap along with Matheny. Well, Matheny got it half right on the block of, of Coda's shot. But Zwicker, again, following up. That's what Carolina's been doing an awful lot of, pounding the offensive boards, giving themselves extra opportunities. With Zwicker at 7-3 and Matheny at 7-4, when they fell, it took a long time for the fall to continue and get there. Did you hear somebody say, Tim? <laughs> Tied at 13, about to go under 12 minutes left. Alexander, as Matheny tips it inside. And it looks as though Matheny picked up the foul. Matheny definitely went over the back of Jive. But Courtney Alexander had an argument right there. A lot of contact in the lane on his drive. So Maryland has won. NC State upset Duke. They will face off in one of the semifinal games tomorrow. In the first game, Wake Forest by one over Florida State this evening. And the winner of this one will take on the Demon Deacons. Virginia content in staying in that 2-3 zone. Guy's shot is blocked, and it was last touched by Carolina. And when they do that, again, you've got someone 7-4, Chase Matheny. He may not be a great leaper, but just when he extends, he creates an awful obstacle. He's got two blocks now. away again a nice defensive job as we talk about Okolaja scored the basket for Coda and he'll go to the free throw line tough play Jamal Robinson just in right now to spell Curtis Staples makes a bad pass it's a bad angle to try to hit the wing there and Okolaja who's been the defensive star for Carolina during that stretch makes a nice play to Coda and then Robinson compounds it by allowing the three point potential three point play you know how Dean Smith is about defense and how thoroughly they go over it. In 21 games this year, Okolaja has graded out best on defense 15 times. And you got to remember, Okolaja was an offensive player when he got to Carolina last year, so he's made the supreme sacrifice. So let's take a, a break. Three-point lead for the Heels. We'll be right back. I think all of our, our players and probably our coaches, too, feed off of Harold being out there because of, of his toughness and his competitiveness. Uh, the, the, the fact is, uh, uh, with, with the, the injury to his leg, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, he's, he's not 100% and he's, he's limited in what he can do, but he still is, is our inspirational leader out there, and, and our, our players are much more confident with him in there. You know, sometimes it takes that kind of situation where somebody has to step up, gut it out, and say, I'm, I'm not going to the bench. I know uh, such is the case with the with the Kansas Jayhawks this year with uh, well, Doug Donner, I can't believe the transfer from California, the guard who is uh, playing with a broken bone in his, uh, in Jared, his wrist. Jared Hass. Jared Hass. You know, sometimes it takes something like that. Well, you look at Dean. Dean gives him so much, even with the injury. I mean, this is a guy that gets to the free throw line more than anybody on his team by at least 50. Okalaja, this is for two. Jamal Robinson, who's still in the lineup, comes away with the rebound. Robinson, a versatile player at 6'6", can play the point, can play the small forward and shooting guard. And he's taking a lot of pressure off the Dean in trying to handle the rock. He's had a problem with injuries as well, an injury to his ankle. He started 13 games as Alexander buries that three. 
Courtney with his first three points of the night. About to go under 10 minutes left in his opening half, and that ball just got by Jamison. Again, we go back to Harold Dean. And his limp, watch, watch the run here. He's pretty much hobbling, and you can see how tender it is. He's got to kind of hop to come to a stop, which means you can't put a lot of pressure on him. But he's still out there plugging away, running the offense, mixing it up. Staples. The lob pass inside Jamal Robinson. Well, we talked about his value right now. He drops down to the small forward position, and they run a nice play backdoor lob. Well, you talk about his versatility. He, he can play front court or he can play point for you, Jamal Robinson. Talented young man. It just hasn't worked out as much as Virginia, at least up to his potential. Jamison with four offensive boards and points off of it. Wow. And not a body on him. Despite playing man-to-man, -man, Virginia got lost. That's one guy the shot goes up. You better locate. And you better recognize. You also better have somebody on a, on a satellite to get up there with him. <laughs> He's in another area. Tied at 18. <laughs> Dean won't go. Of course, a real banging inside, and here comes Cota with the basketball. And that's where Dean's problem with his leg shows up. Short on the jumper, bad wheel. Five points for Cota. Averaging almost seven assists a game. Look at Shimon Williams playing Harold Dean a lot tighter. They're going to make him work throughout the night, hoping that his leg fatigues. What is Curtis Staples doing under there with those trees? Well, Zicker, Zwicker loved it. <laughs> he just devoured it. Look at Jameson. Look at this. Jameson on the board again and again. Ten points for him. Jeff Jones wants a 20-second timeout. I think Jameson's getting the message. He's unstoppable thus far on that offensive board. Well, they've got him for four. I know he's got at least that. He's got five total. Take a look again. Jamison under the basket. That was the result of it, but here's where the work comes in. Running the baseline, constant movement. He's not standing still. Using his arms, using his body, watching, and then at the right moment striking where the opening is. Again, effort. The intelligence to recognize where the ball is coming off, and of course, the timing. Take a look, 12 second chance points for North Carolina. They're only up by four, so in a game like this, that's one area that Virginia would love to shore up. Dean, no call, quite a collision as Okalaja came up and tried to pick him up just as he was catching the basketball. Good no call, Okalaja was on his way down before there was ever contact made. Staples going the wrong way, gets away an off-balance three, and it's off bound, out of bounds off North Carolina last. And that was a good call, Ron. Curtis Staples wasn't set and leaning. Well, they get it into Nolan. Goes back to Staples. This time he squared up and misses it as well. You can see Desharn back in the lineup. Zwicker puts up a very quick shot. Nolan is there to rebound it. Yeah, Zwicker's got to recognize he's got a considerable height advantage on these guys. He's set up deep that time. And as you said, he rushed his shot instead of turning, getting himself set and extending. He's only one of six. Zwicker to start this uh, ball game. Staples with another three. Too hard and a push, and it looks like Desharn will get the foul. And despite the foul fact that Deshaun was the only guy working the defensive boards, the offensive boards for Virginia. 22-18, 7.53 left until halftime, and we'll be right back.
Dave hey, Ryan back in Studio B. Let's head to the Kiel Center in St. Louis Conference USA semifinals. Cincy and Marquette. Bearcats are pressing. That means Ruben Patterson is jamming big time stuff. Bearcats look good. Marquette hanging in though. It's looking a tight game in the first half. Back to ACC. Cincinnati's another one of those clubs that uh, has been staggering, so to speak, of, of late. Louisville, in their last 11 games, they lose six. Well, that's a, a pure case of teams that have peaked and now are kind of hitting those valleys. This is obviously the wrong time to hit it, but the beauty of the at-large bids and not having to go to the automatic bid is that you have some recovery time. The last four shots put up by Virginia have been three-point attempts. I have a feeling that was discussed in the uh, timeout across the way with head coach Jeff Jones. Well, you know that they're trying to stretch the floor, but again, you still have to take good shots. You have to move the ball to get open shots. Not only were they threes, but a number of them off balance. Shimon Williams, very short on that one. And then Matheny comes away with a rebound. Matheny's got 25 blocked shots this year. And and he's a pretty good free throw shooter at 76 percent. Look at Carolina's going to double team Nolan when he receives on the block. Alexander puts up a shot, falling away toward the baseline. Not close. Shot selection in the last three or four minutes by Virginia has not been good, and they're down by four as a result of it. which makes it a lot easier to offensive rebound against since Virginia was packed in that time or it's going to get Virginia out of the total. Now offensively here, I'd like to see a little inside out, explore the defense. Nolan's got to take the double team when it comes and then hit the open man. Nolan against Wicker picked up the dribble, had no place to go and they've turned it over. The bouncer, Jameson, not there. And a foul is uh, called on Dersh. Willie Dirks, the freshman out of Floral Park, New York. Well, on the other end, Norman Nolan got it half right. He received and took the double team, but he just couldn't turn and make a good pass. Harold Dean wide open. Take a look at Antoine Jameson's numbers. And again, that's from a lot of hard work. You look at the offensive rebounds of four that he's gotten credit for, not to mention the others that he's got his hands on. You know, I could see where you could just become mesmerized with a guy and instead of boxing him out, you just you watch in amazement yeah. as he sails by you. Yeah, but before long, before you're seated on the bench, you're going to have to wake up and understand the only way to stop a guy like that is put your body on him and keep it there. 10-0 run in the last 347. Carolina. This is their largest lead of the night at 26-18. Nice job. That's taking the double. Nurse was open and had a good look at it. Jeff Jones screaming that it should have gone the other way. In fact, telling one of the officials that he signaled it was Virginia's ball. And he's going to lose that argument. <laughs> I loved it this afternoon. I'm not going to tell you which coach it was, but the crowd really rang out with boos when they disagreed with the call. And the coach stood up to the official and said, 18,000 can't be wrong. <laughs> oh. Shot clock is at 11, now at 10. Okolaja left alone. He'll put up a three. Well off the mark, but Williams is there to get the carom. To Jameson. Wow. That's why he led the ACC in assists and leads all freshmen in the nation in assists. Ed Coda. Well, he's had at least seven in the last five basketball games as they have snowballed over everybody. Well, you know, you get a guy that's going to find you. It's a joy to work to get open. Dean blocked by Coda. Nolan puts it up over Zwicker to Hill score. Nolan now with six. They had been scoreless for the last five and a half minutes before he put that one up and in. Makes it an eight-point game. Williams with the long three. It's not there. And 
Great rebound by Alexander as he skied. Jamison still getting up at the other end of the floor. Count the hoop. Alexander will go to the line and an opportunity for a three-point play. So we're talking about putting a body on Anton Jamison. And I think Norm Nolan is taking it to an extreme. <laughs> you take a look here. Look at the block out. Well, and Both of them go down. And he pulls them down. A nice takedown. And he's going to lay on top of them. An instance before, a couple of possessions earlier, boom, he makes contact. You know that Jeff Jones spoke about this in the huddle. That somebody's got to put a body on him and slow him down. And unfortunately, that's the consequence of being a great offensive rebounder. You're a marked man. That's the first Virginia free throw right there at the 428 mark. And they make it a five-point margin as Matheny goes to the bench. And Craig McAndrew, a 6'10 freshman out of Queensland, Australia, comes in, and he will be leaning on Zwicker. And McAndrew, a very physical player, likes to throw his body around as well. Virginia looking for that rebounding strength. Alexander, his first foul, called for the hand check. And it is a one-and-one -one situation. Well, you know, Vince Carter at 6'6", he's another one of those versatile guys that can play in the backcourt, play up front. And he caught Courtney Alexander on the side and just backed him down. Alexander really didn't know what to do. Look, Elijah will go out. Antoine Jameson, a very short rest for him, comes back in. Dean Smith's doing a nice job of keeping his players rested. He really only plays at most seven guys. He's got to find a way in the rotation to keep them fresh. That's been the key to that remarkable streak of eight conference wins in a row. Carter got them both. He had 16 in that uh, last win over Virginia. As we go under four minutes until halftime. Seven-point game. Tar Heels leading. Staples gets that missed shot by Alexander. And you watch the Carolina guard. You never get any rest from them. You can hold the ball. They're still slapping, trying to deflect. Mentally, that, that wears on you after a while, and you start making unforced errors because you're mentally fatigued. Way off. Dean calling that the ball had been tipped, but that one uh, missed badly. Timeout, 326 left. That was a reflex action. Dave Ryan back inside the Championship Week Studios. A-10 semifinal in Philly Temple, Rhode Island. Pepe Sanchez makes nice steal on the sideline. Outlets to Ryan Brokenboro. He'll go in for the layup plus the foul count the basket. Owls in the semis for the 15th straight time in the A-10. Back to the ACC. Well, our situation, 30 to 23, North Carolina on top. Boy, it has really gotten physical. I say gotten physical. It's been physical all night inside. Well, we're not the only ones playing physical ball, but we talked about Harold Dean, the shooter's reflex. When you miss badly, you say it's deflected. As you could clearly see, Williams didn't even get near that ball, but Dean's saying it was deflected. Excuse maker. But he's too good a player for that. He'll come back to, to bury a couple and won't ask for help. Virginia's been consistent. 31% from three-point range, 31 overall. As Jamison bounces off, can't get the shot to go down this time. He normally doesn't have to shoot from that far away. Norman Nolan doing a nice job of pushing him out that extra step. And that's because he's meeting him early. And you see the bumping between Nolan and Jai. Virginia fans enjoyed that. It's right there in their corner, but as you mentioned, we saw the highlights of the other games. You take a look at this right here. Again, the bumps and the pushing. Every game right now with so much thing, so much at stake, every game is going to get physical. 
It's only the third foul of North Carolina in the first half. And an elbow called on Jai. So he gets two fouls in about 10 seconds. Dean Smith standing up asking to call it both ways. But the bottom line is Nolan doing a nice job of leaning and initiating. And you see Jai turn and what he does in trying to block out. When he turns, he does kind of a swim move. Problem is his backstroke caught Nolan in the chest. <laughs> That's a swim move like defensive ends usually. Seven point game, two minutes and 40 seconds to play until halftime. ESPN News coming up at halftime. They'll bring you up to date on all the tournament action today and uh, obviously there's plenty as we head towards Selection Sunday. Well, you see they just leave McAndrew alone. Craig doesn't take the shot. Alexander will knock it down, though. He knows what his job is. Perfect pass to Alexander coming off the pick. And you can still see the banging inside. Jameson, and that's more his range. He is such a quick, quick leaper, Lynn. And he gets that step, and once he gets a little bit of daylight, you notice he doesn't keep his feet parallel to his shoulder. We'll have a chance to look at that. He's going right to the basket. He always has an angle on the defender. He is 7 of 9 in the first half, 15 points. He had 19 in the last meeting against Virginia. Again, another look at Anton Jameson underneath. First of all, Shimon Williams, a nice job with a little wraparound pass. McAndrew just turned his back on Jameson, but Jameson has that foot going towards the basket, so he doesn't have to put it on the floor. That as he steps and puts his weight on that front foot, that propels him to the basket. McAndrew is out. Matheny checks back into the lineup. The foul was on Jameson, his first, and only the team spit. Jameson is a picture of efficiency underneath the basket. No wasted motion, no wasted dribble. Nolan, Zwicker was right there in his face, and Carolina will take it away with a minute 21 seconds showing on the clock. <laughs> well off the mark on that uh, shot from the right corner. You can see the difference in Okolaja's game. He really wasn't ready to shoot that last year. You know, he'd have been itching to pull the trigger. Curtis Staples with his third three-pointer. All nine of his points from outside the arc. And that cuts it back to a five-point game. And Virginia still has an opportunity to get another possession. If they can make a stop here. They can cut this lead down to something that makes them feel good going back in for the half. Coder looks up at the shot clock. It's at 12, now at 11. Shot clock at three. Nice. Zwicker. You talk about a setup. Ed Coder. That was the New York Okie Doke. You lull him asleep, going back and forth, side to side. Then all of a sudden, you bring the defense to you and you just hit the open man. Carolina almost came up with a steal, preventing Virginia from getting a last second shot, but Carter's called for the foul, and it's his first, the team sixth. And a 20 second timeout called by North Carolina. Well, coming up at halftime, ESPN News, an update. ACC, Big East Conference highlights, and one more tournament ticket. And Ron, you know Ed Code is a New York City native, as am I, and I've seen this on the playground. You just lull them to sleep, look away, and then you find, you bring everybody to you, and then you find your open man on the back end. The numbers on Coda didn't start the game, but he's got five points, three assists, and only one turnover in his stint here in this first half. You know, him being a starter early in the year, he found out he had some things to learn. Coach Smith put him on the bench, and I guess he's gained perspective because he's been much more effective coming off the bench. Dersh comes into the lineup. 
shot is taken. No whistle on the play. Jeff Jones stands on the far sideline with his arms extended in the air saying, was there not contact? And the officials say, no, there was none. We're at halftime. Our score, North Carolina 34, Virginia 28. We'll be right back. ESPN 2. Thirty-four twenty-eight. Our score at halftime, as uh, the North Carolina Tar Heels have have just been extremely difficult to stop, and particularly the fellow they call AJ uh, Jamison has just been everywhere. Well, you know that offensive rebounding is an art, and it's really not for the faint of heart. And when you look and analyze Anton Jamison's game, you recognize that he's not timid. You know, he's going to initiate contact as much as he takes the contact. You know, he gets bumped. He also finds a way to avoid it. But more importantly, as I said, you got to be a warrior. You got to have your mind set because you're going to run into things like that. People are going to point to you and try to stop you any way they can. Take a look at the people who've guarded him. He's too quick for Colin Ducharme. Norm Nolan's done a pretty decent job on him. McAndrew hadn't been on him that long, and he still wind up getting a field goal. But the bottom line is Carolina's doing all the things necessary to win. Paying attention to detail as we look here, they've been taking care of the ball. One layup allowed, which really accounts for the great defense that they've been playing. You know, no team in the last seven games has shot more than 40% against them. In fact, opponents have averaged 39.7%, and tonight, Virginia only getting 32.4% of their field goals down. You know, Len, another number that's not on there, they only had six team fouls in the first half, didn't put the opposition in the bonus. Another attention to detail. Absolutely. They're playing without fouling, which means they're playing good team defense. They're not reaching. They're not gambling. Siobhan Williams backs it out at 18 seconds on the shot clock and says, let's reset it. Oh, Elijah, he had a double pump on that one and, and kissed it off the glass. And Courtney Alexander, he knew he did everything right when that ball went in. You should have seen the look on his face. That shot might be classified as unwashed, but it, uh, it counts three. And it's a 37 to 28 game. Wow. Alexander's look was complete opposite of Okolaji. Descharm fouled as he took the ball back up to the hoop. The ability to change in midair. Okolaja does a nice job. He had to smile about that though. First he comes back and says, all in a day's work, but he gave you a little wry smile. You know, Descharmes, an interesting youngster, a freshman out of Richmond, 40 block shots. He's second among rookies in scoring and rebounding in the league and second among all players in block shots in the ACC, and he was not anywhere around as far as any of the all-rookie teams. But he said it didn't bother him that he was left off of uh, the all-rookie club, but his most important thing, he just wanted to win. Basket interference. Nolan hit it over the cylinder. Well, Deshaun's proud of his work. What he's given Virginia is a physical presence inside, giving them the ability to play a lot of the dominant big people in the league and make Virginia competitive. Here's a guy who came into Virginia that a lot of folks thought he might have to redshirt. Nolan picks up his second foul. The Carolina fans applaud that. I'm telling you, if you wanted to call it real liberally or, or really call it uh, closely, Jameson and <laughs> both of them would be sitting on the bench with five fouls. They really are banging each other. When well, Nolan's taking on the job of the enforcer in there, nobody comes to the lane without being tattooed by his elbow. Antoine Jameson gets that one, and that's what I'm talking about. He just went into a pile of people, and Dean Smith is not real happy about that. You see Zwicker grabbing him, saying, be smart. That was not a smart foul. Well, not only the foul, but the reaction to the foul as he swung his hand in disgust to the official. You know, they want to prevent him from getting a technical. Three fouls on Jameson. Alexander. Nice job of hanging, going to the hoop. Again, we talked about Jamison's offensive rebounding ability and how he's not shy to initiate the contact. He gets bumped a couple of times going underneath. He doesn't like Nolan's enforcer action, 
And then as he goes to the basket, he's going to push a little bit. Eh, I don't know. Well, the, the little cross check across the back without the hockey stick. That's what they got him for. And I think his frustration showed when he, you know, registered his disgust with the official because he, he got bumped about six times mm -hmm. before he actually went to the went to the basket and created some contact of his own. That foul just a moment ago on Zwicker, his second third team foul. Alexander with nine trying to go into double figures here. Thirty seven twenty nine about to go under 18 minutes to play. And Carolina very deliberate in the beginning of this half on offense. They're looking to try to build this lead methodically reminiscent of what Wake Forest did against Florida State in the first game. Once they got a 6-8 point lead, they weren't going to rush, they weren't going to force. Carter just takes it right up over the top of Alexander and scores. Carter with six. Nolan, strong move and very unlucky on the shot. out of bounds by Okalaja. And that was actually a pretty good shot by Shimon Williams. First of all, he can hit that. And secondly, as a guard, he took what the defense gave him. The defense kept retreating, and he stepped up to the line, flowed into the shot. <laughs> Staples, the crowd wanted a walk called. Nolan had to do something to get out of the lane. And Dean gets it. That's Harold Dean's strength, putting it on the floor, going to the basket, trying to create something. That's why he goes to the free throw line an awful lot of times. It's a tough matchup for Alexander against Carter. Dean fouled him and an opportunity to make it a three-point play. Courtney Alexander is trapped on the block with Vince Carter, and he needs an awful lot of help. He's forced to front, and if you do that, you got to get the backside help. Harold Dean a little late getting there, and with Carter at 6'6", and Dean at about 6'1", 6'2", I don't know what Dean was going to do once he got there, except what he did. Boy, and those scores coming in. Marquette running away with Cincinnati, up by 14 points in the first half. Well, one of the problems, I think, with Cincinnati is that their starting point guard was suspended indefinitely. There's been some dissension, apparently, on that team, and Bob Huggins is going to have to regroup. Staples for three. They're going to play up to their potential. Staples has got four three-pointers now. Keeps it under double figures, which, from a mental standpoint, Virginia can grab some solace from it. Now they're in a 2-3 zone. Got it back to Carter and too much traffic. You see Dean just unable to run any quicker and he lost it in the lane, but he was fouled. Well, Sunday night on ESPN beginning at 6.30, the men's tournament selection special followed at 7.30 with the women's NCAA selection special presented by State Farm. That is a long stroke right there by Alexander. And Alexander's a streak shooter now. He's starting to get the feeling. You give him some more looks like that. And Virginia's back in this ball game. Right now they're starting to feel good about themselves down only five. Knocked away, and they get the break. Staples got a hand on it. They got two on one, and Staples will take it up and score. Nice job by Curtis Staples. Forced Vince Carter to backpedal to the point where he couldn't defend. Eight-0 run in the last 65 seconds by Virginia. And this zone has kind of puzzled Ed Cota. He really isn't playing with that panache as he would, but 
If you can't beat it by pass and throw it, you just throw over it, especially if you got a guy like Vince Carter. Carter with point number 11. It pushes it back to a five-point game as we hit the 15-minute mark. Staples again for three. And Descharm goes down as Jamison ran underneath him. Well, Virginia's gotten back primarily with the defense playing the 2-3 zone. But again, no pressure on the ball. A clear look at a cut by Vince Carter. And again, watch the ball handler right there, Coda, with a, nobody on him. Carter comes flying in from the right side through the seam of the zone. Either on the zone or if you're going to front somebody, you better have pressure on the ball. Hey? Absolutely. If you don't put pressure on the ball in those situations, the passer has a clear view and can hit with pinpoint accuracy. Jamison, 15 points and seven rebounds. Misses them both. That's a break for Virginia. They need to capitalize right here. Run something that's going to get their best shooters an opportunity for a clear look. <laughs> Alexander from 18 feet this time. What do I know? Courtney Alexander is on a roll. I'll tell you, it is a three-point game. And you talked about him being a streaker. Second foul on Matheny. Now, see, I, I have to look at this play again if we could. We're not going to have an opportunity to see, but I don't like the call when after a guy releases the ball, he comes back down, and then there's some contact made. I believe that's incidental. It has nothing to do with the shot whatsoever. And all too often, people are getting that call. And I can see if the contact is made while they're in the air or immediately after release because it will have an effect on the shot. But if a guy lands and even has a chance to take a step back and there's some contact, to me, that's incidental. Jamison, two of six at the line this evening. Oh. Nolan squares up. Zwicker maybe got a piece of that one and knocked out of bounds by Carter. So there's a timeout. Let's take it with a 13-48 left in the ballgame. Four-point lead for the Heels. Dave Ryan inside the Championship Week Studios as Ron and Len mentioned big upset Bruin in St. Louis Conference USA semifinal. Marquette and Cincy watch the feed. Marcus West, Faisal Abraham puts it away. The two-hander, Golden Eagles trying to dethrone the first and only Conference USA tourney champs. Back to the ACC. Forty-five, forty-one. our score. North Carolina on top. And, of course, the question jumps back up again when you look at the profile in Virginia, 18 and 11, 7 and 9 at ACC play, and you see their quality wins. South Carolina, UMass, North Carolina, and Maryland. Uh, are they a bubble team? Are they in, or are they on the outside looking in, Lynn? Well, I think that they're in, and primarily because, again, the tough schedule, the fact that they're in the ACC, they've got to play uh, top 15 teams, you know, I think four of them, and they're going to play them twice a year, so that's eight games against quality opponents. The only thing that might hurt them, there was a stretch in February where they lost four in a row during that crucial 10-game uh, block that the selection committee looks at. But overall, that win against Maryland was huge for them. So I'd have to believe that they're in on the basis of all those other uh, points that we made. See, they're questioning the shot clock. It has gone back to 35. I didn't think that it, uh, it should have changed. They're, they, they just changed it back to seven. Yeah. Three-pointer on the way. Too hard off the back iron. Wouldn't go. And Dean, boy, is limping noticeably again. Again, Carolina trying to figure out the zone. They were able to throw over at once with Carter in the game. Right now, they don't have the athletes except maybe Jamison to do that. 
Zwicker off the mark. He has not had a good shooting night. Zwicker is two of seven. And actually now two of eight. Jamison battles, gets flattened as he gets it off to Coda. Somebody warm up the whirlpool. Anton Jamison's going to need it after this one. They're going to be several of them. They have to draw numbers. Under 13 minutes. Four-point game, Carolina. And Matheny is saying, he elbowed me first, but Matheny's the guy that got caught. That's the third on him. You judge for yourself. Here it is. You take a look. Once again, a couple of bumps inside. Matheny playing behind him. There's the elbow from Jamison, but the call was made right away. I didn't see Matheny with the elbow, but he certainly was draped all over him. And at 7-4, he can drape. <laughs> Descharm comes back into the lineup as Matheny gets a breather, picking up his third foul. Well, you see all the attention on Jamison. Williams off the mark. And that foul called on Alexander. And Alexander didn't argue. I think he got both hands in the back of the, the Carolina offensive player. But there's been an awful lot of pushing and shoving in there in the packages that we've shown you with Anton Jameson. He's used his hands a lot. Nolan's been using his hands. It's almost like holding in football. On any offensive play, you might be able to make that call. That's right. Total with three. That solves a lot right there. Makes it, once again, a seven-point game, and Coda has eight. A little breathing room for Carolina right now. Puts the pressure back on Virginia. They don't want this thing to get kicked out too far. They've got to find an answer on this possession. Lord, Lord. Alexander. Kings not there. Cota with the outlet pass. Williams at the other end of it. Score. He's going to go to the line. Courtney Alexander trying to do a little too much right now. He's not playing with his teammates. He's trying to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Take a look at the shot right there. And what happened is that the defender, Shimon Williams, once he put his hand up against Alexander, he leaked out. Alexander came down admiring his work. And Williams was off to the races. Third foul of Alexander. You see Jeff Jones coming over to talk with him. This is not a situation right now, and as much as Courtney Alexander feels confident in his ability, it's not a situation where he can take over. Well, that three-point play makes it a 10-point Tar Heel lead. So this is what it looks like through the first three quarterfinal games. Maryland wins handily over Clemson. The upset by NC State over number one seed Duke. They will face off tomorrow. And it'll be Wake Forest, who uh, got by Florida State by one, taking on the winner of this one at 1.30 Eastern time tomorrow afternoon. We well, hear the numbers on Coda. Eight points, five assists, three rebounds, two turnovers, and he has a block as well. Well, we talked about it and touched on it before. Ed Cota leads all freshmen in the nation in assists. And not to mention he's playing in the toughest conference in the country. And we're talking about guys like Mike Bibby of Arizona, Shaheen Holloway of Seton Hall. I mean, Cota's proven to be a rare find for North Carolina. Mal Robinson, number 13, the 6'7 senior out of Jamaica, New York. Nolan blocked by Zwicker, and they say he also was fouled by Sir Jets. Three on him. Well, I'll tell you what, what I saw Zwicker doing was playing some pretty darn good defense. You know, didn't leave his feet, he extended. He might have bumped him with the body a little bit. Nolan doing a nice job of attacking the basket, but it's hard when you got six inches. If you're Zwicker, you know when you're giving up the six. Seven points for Nolan. And he's been relatively quiet this second half. 
as we mentioned before, the average almost uh, 20 points and nine rebounds in the two, in two games versus Carolina this year. So he has been effective for Virginia. And Carolina's done a nice job of shutting him down. That's the first two points for him in this half. To me, the most interesting thing in looking at uh, Nolan's numbers is he has better numbers in the conference than he does in the non-conference games. I think part of that is he matches up better against the Serge Wickers and some of the bigger people, uh, Tim Duncan, because he's so mobile and he's also strong and not afraid to play physically. Shot clock is at six, now at five. Cota suspends, good job of defense. Deshaun comes away with it for Virginia. And they can make it a six-point game again. Ricker almost tipped that thing in. Nolan follows, didn't use the glass, and he fouled by Zwicker, his fourth. Better be careful. It could be five and out of here. The irony of it is that Zwicker grabbed Jameson about four or five minutes ago when Jameson <laughs> protested the call too vehemently. You take a look at Nolan at work, and work he does. Zwicker very fortunate. He got a piece of the ball, maybe he got a piece of the front of the arm, but Zwick is very fortunate he didn't get a technical call on him. And it's amazing, you got to walk a mile in the other guy's shoes before you, before you start taking some action. He was a peacemaker a moment ago. That's a great point. Nolan, you have to be impressed with your, his size at 6'8 or just over and weigh like 250 pounds. That is a lot of work under there. And he's been banging bodies and still going up in all the traffic all night. And you know, the interesting part about it, and you look at him, he likes it. Yeah. He likes the contact. When you build like him. It's like people that can run always love wind sprints. <laughs> <laughs> Count me out. Alexander doing a nice job of fronting Carter again. That time, denied the ball. Pure and simple. Great, quick, leaping ability, and again, it's that first step, and he's up and beyond it before you can do anything. That's right. He's got his foot dropped, getting head and shoulders past the defender, and as I said, efficiency. Doesn't put the ball on the floor, no wasted motion. Hey, they've done a good job of keeping an eye on him, though. That's only three points for him this half. As Alexander knocks down the jumper, 16 for him now. Eight in the first half, eight here in the second. Carolina. 20 points better with points in the paint in this game. I'll tell you, one of the reasons I think Jameson's been slow is because all that physical play right now, that takes a lot out of you. Got a new second win, though. He's also got the charm in there. Yeah, and as we mentioned, a little quicker taking him to school. Exactly. He's, he's able to knife. He's able to get position on Deshaun. And, and there's a question of experience as well. Deshaun, yeah. a freshman, may not have the key to play in him. Alexander Carter just simply couldn't get through all the screens. He was getting banged on every rib. And I tell you, we talked about it before. Alexander had a slight period where he was heating up. That's the best way to slow a streak shooter down or any offensive player on a roll. Make him play defense. Third ready for Carter. Carter. Yep. That goes back to that example you made a minute ago. If you're going to front him, you better have pressure on the ball or I'll sit there and pick you apart all day. Being very short on that attempt. Knocked away and it's Alexander who got a hand on it. Robinson to Descharm. Nolan, the benefactor of a ball that got tipped. And I tell you, that's the difference between having a system and a reacting to the situation. You wonder why Carolina doubles Descharm, who's not an offensive threat, because what you do is you leave a guy wide open. Six-point game. But the system probably dictated you double on the block regardless. Jameson can't get it. Okalaja on the follow. Wow, he was two feet over the hoop with his arm. Well, you talk about the transformation. Again, Okalaja last year was more of a jump shooter, looked to shoot the three. 
now with his size and newfound commitment to playing defense and the rebounding, you find him above the rim inside a lot. Desharm scored the hoop, fouled by Okalija. Beg your pardon, Ed Cota, they give it to him, his first. Well, maybe I spoke too soon about Deshaun not being a real offensive threat. That time he received on the block in a mismatch where Cota had to play behind him, and Deshaun did the right thing and went straight to the hole. As Ricker comes back in, reminding you, if you just joined us, he has four fouls. 7-16 to play. Maryland is in. North Carolina State is in. Wake Forest is in to the semis. Will it be Virginia or will it be North Carolina who leads by six points right now? The two semifinal games beginning here at Greensboro tomorrow afternoon, 1.30 Eastern time. Take a look at the 2-3 zone. I was just going to say that they keep moving the back line up further. Pulling them up further, and you have somebody sneak behind it for the lob, particularly when there's no pressure on the pass. Virginia did a nice job of defending at that time. They were prepared. They can cut it to a four-point margin. Three-pointer. I tell you, Ron, I just can't say enough about the underdog teams like Virginia earlier today. Florida State, and certainly this afternoon, North Carolina State. They have opportunities and they can fold, but there's no quit in these guys, and Virginia is just holding serve here. Coda, too hard off the glass, tipped away, and here comes Virginia. Dean. He just thought that was going up. Staples had some daylight. But he's standing right in front of the coach. Well, you, know, <laughs> you know he had to think twice about it. It's a voice of experience, folks. <laughs> Dean. Fouled by Shimon Williams. And it's a one-and-one -one situation. Well, they forced Carolina to come out and extend a little bit defensively. Williams reaching, and he reached about three times during that one sequence. And when you're reaching on defense and you're off balance and the offensive player loses the ball, it looks like you gain an advantage as a defender from reaching. You're going to get called for it. Glenn, to back up what you were talking about, about fight and everybody and how closely all these games have been played, it also backs up that thing about the RPI rating which says this is the number one league in America. And it shows you that from top to bottom, there's, there's not a great deal of separation. You know, familiarity breeds contempt. And when these teams play some of these bigger teams enough, they start to realize that, hey, they're human. Alexander for three. We are tied at the 5.30 mark. to 20. This is an 8-0 run by Virginia. We talked about the vulnerability. Again, Courtney Alexander didn't hesitate on that one. <laughs> he Little pulled the trigger rapidly, didn't he? He certainly did and hit a bullseye. But the bottom line is, again, that's the confidence factor. Really, Courtney Alexander's the only guy who hadn't ebbed and flowed with his confidence. He's wanted to shoot it every time he's gotten his hands on it. He's got 22 points. He is 4 of 5 from outside the arc. And he's more effective out there than he is inside. Inside, he gets off balance a little bit as he puts it on the floor, tries to beat you off the dribble. Never really goes all the way. But if you give him daylight when he sets up and squares up from three, he's going to hurt you. And just a sophomore. Lenny had 26 against South Carolina. That's his... Uh, high for this year. And he's headed for that number right now, or even better. Jameson. He's fouled as he takes it to the hoop by Deshar. And we have an opportunity the next time Virginia's down, if they play that 2-3 zone again, you can see that they're very extended. They're trying to play not only the three-point area and cover the shooters, but also cover inside against Jamison getting in the seams in the paint. And I don't know if you can do both. If you're gonna if you're gonna take something away, you can only take one of those away by playing that zone.
Jamison three of seven at the line. About to go into five minutes in this one. Carolina now by two. Let's take a timeout. 518 left to play. Tar Heels 61-59. Zone has kind of puzzled Ed Cota. He really isn't playing with that panache as he would. But if you can't beat it by pass and throw it, you just throw over it, especially if you got a guy like Vince Carter. Carter with 61-59. Here are a couple of numbers I think will interest you. For the game, North Carolina is 49%, but they are 56% in the second half. Glenn, taking care of the basketball has been the difference in why Virginia has not allowed this thing to get out of hand. They only have three turnovers tonight. Well, and that's a tribute again to Jeff Jones. That's part of his system. As long as he's been coaching Virginia, as I remember, his teams always took care of the ball. They haven't been the greatest shooter. They haven't had the greatest field goal percentage, but they've taken care of the ball, which kind of neutralizes bad shooting. You get an opportunity to maximize your possessions instead of giving teams something. Virginia shooting 39%. Deshard. Got the ball off to Robinson, but he got bumped and stepped on the baseline. So the play they set up goes awry. Carolina will have it, leading by two, 61-59. That's a good job by Robinson just to recover that ball. That pass was pretty far afield. Robinson reached out but couldn't walk the tightrope. Looks like a high hardwood from Nolan Ryan, didn't it? Look at the zone. They've kind of contracted it a little bit. Trying to protect against the lobs inside, and certainly Jameson stepping up in the crease. Carter left alone, and he nails it. Carter now with 16. It's his first three of the night. But what a big shot to push it back to a five-point margin. And as I said, you can't do both. You either give up that jumper clean, or you spread out and give out the open plays in the, in the lane by Anton Jameson and others flashing in. Carolina in a 2-3 of their own right now. It's a battle of the zones. Nolan kicks it back out. And a nice job as Carter got right back on the perimeter. Shot clock at four. I don't get it. Je Dean's leg bothering him. He should not be shooting threes right now. He's only two of 11. Shimon Williams blisters it. Williams with nine and just like that it's an eight point ball game with three and a half minutes to play. That's a valiant effort by Harold Dean trying to help his team but you got to recognize that if you're not able to do it you got to give it up. We will be right back. Seven fifty-nine, and North Carolina has matched Virginia's 8-0 run with one of their own, Lynn. And they've been able to do it by hitting a long-range jumper. There you see Vince Carter doing it. And then on the other end, the next possession, Shimon Williams on a penetrating kick out by Ed Coder. And what's happened is, again, against the zone, the inside play of Antoine Jameson has forced that zone to tighten up a little bit and creating some room for Carolina's three-point shooters, and they've taken advantage. You take a look at the 8-0 run. That's the one that's matched Virginia's 8-0 run prior to it. So now that clock starts to move in a hurry if you're Jeff Jones. About to hit three minutes. Deshaun, when he receives it, he's got to look at it because that's what's going to make the defense change and create open shots for people. Takes a 16-footer, and that's not what Coach Jones was looking for. But everybody else was covered. They were going to allow him to shoot it. And he didn't have to shoot it, but what happens is against the zone, if you don't turn your back and look at them, they're not going to shift. And as a passer, that's what you want. You want to catch the rotation and find someone open. Shot clock at 10. Virginia out of the 2 3 and in the man. Nolan called for the foul on Jamison. Take another look. Colin Ducharme, watch him at the elbow. He gets it. He doesn't even turn. And when he received it, you notice nobody moved. 
Now, at least when he turns and he faces, you see the defense change. Now, he wasn't successful with the shot, but the defense did change. As soon as he got it in face, they had to go back and cover people. Jameson, 22 points, 10 rebounds. You see his numbers at the free throw line as he strokes this one. It is a nine-point game with 2.34 to play. Now, if you're Virginia, you've got to push the ball up now, get some quick hitter opportunities, certainly try to free up Staples and Alexander in this zone. A little inside-outside play, make a move. Staples not there. Nolan battles against Swicker. Swicker gets it away. And the foul by Dean. That on Dean is going to be his third. Well, for the man standing over on the sideline who uh, has the arena named after him and is still coaching there, 36 years the head coach at North Carolina. It is incredible when you look at the numbers. This if they win, it's going to be 10 in a row tonight, and they're headed that way. But they have gone 27 consecutive seasons of winning at least 21 ball games. Lynn, in this league and against the caliber of competition they play, it's simply incredible. Well, it absolutely is. And it's not only because he's been able to recruit some of the best players in the country, but he's also been able to develop them. And, and you got to give Coach Smith a lot of credit. He had some great players and only had them for two years and lost them and is still able to develop a highly competitive team with the people that he had. Alexander hits the shot, and uh, Virginia calls a timeout with two minutes exactly on the clock. 24 points now for Alexander. And a full day of championship week action tomorrow. This is the way it looks. The Mid-American Championship, 11.30 a.m. Then we'll come here to Greensboro for NC State at Maryland at 1.30, followed by semifinal game number two at around 3.30. Then the A-10 Championship, 6 o'clock early evening tomorrow. The AT&T Big East Championship at 8 Eastern. The WAC Championship at 10 Eastern time. Championship week rolls on on ESPN tomorrow. Ron Franklin, Lynn Elmore, coming to you from the Greensboro Coliseum in Greenboro, Greensboro, North Carolina, in the final two minutes of this last quarterfinal game. Maryland and NC State are in. They'll face off tomorrow. Wake Forest squeezed by, winning by one over Florida State. They will meet the winner of this one here. And with Carolina leading by nine and 159 showing on the clock. They're getting a foot in the door to make it 10 wins in a row and another semifinal for them. They've won this tournament 13 times. They have been in the final 10 other times. So that's 23 out of 43 years. Well, as I said, you know, it's a tremendous record, and we talk about the losses of players. When you lose a Jerry Stackhouse or Rasheed Wallace after two years and you're still able to recruit and build and continue the dynasty, I mean, you just got to give the man credit where it's due. Guys like Ed Coda, he was a fine. You know, being able to pull a team together that doesn't have the depth that you think of when you think of a North Carolina team such as this crew right here, again, it's just quality coaching. Coda out. Okalaja comes in. Well, what Carolina's doing right now, is only a 53% free throw shooter. They want him on defense. They don't want him in there to get fouled. And that's what Virginia's looking to do. Alexander, that's a new season high for him. He's got 27. It was 26 against South Carolina. Five of six from the arc. And he's keeping hopes alive, no question. And it's funny, because Okolodge, we talked about his free throw shooting. The ball came inbounds, man. He ran away from the ball to the opposite <laughs> corner. Interesting, when you look at the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Tar Heels have won this championship more than anybody else. The only team that hasn't won is uh, is Clemson. And I, I heard an interesting story today that uh, actually they won the old Southern Conference in 1933, which, which is where this one came from. And I'm told that most of that team was football players, and because it was time for spring training to start, they elected not to go to the basketball tournament. My now, times have changed. I'm telling you. <laughs> You know, the hype, the hype wasn't in existence back then.
take a look now. Dean Smith able to get Okolaja off the floor. Virginia now, if they're going to foul anyone, the only one who's shooting below 70% is Anton Jameson. Zwicker. Back to nine. As we're headed toward the 60-second mark left in this final quarterfinal game. And it looks like Staples will be whistled for the foul. Foul number five for the Staples. That's the second. So this is what is left with 54.4 seconds. Now we'll show you the, the reset in just a second. Okolaja prepares to check into the lineup. Javon Williams with 11. Places Williams. 11 point lead. Just over 54 seconds to play. You see Dean Smith on the side saying no threes. He wants to extend his defense a little bit, not give any open looks. And that's not what he meant. Carter over the back, and Nolan will go to the free throw line. In the situation that Carolina's in, once the shot goes up, what you have to do is cover the board, make sure you get possession. That time Vince Carter kind of fell asleep, didn't block off. And as you see Okolaja is substituted for. Shimon Williams back on the floor. Who's it going to be? It's going to be uh, Okay, so they call Dean for the foul. Four on him. One full. Timeout left for Virginia. They also have a 20. Well over the limit at 14, and uh, Carolina with nine. And Virginia has the possession area. Kara. But uh, they've also got nine points to make up with 44.7 seconds left on the clock. Well, you can wrap this one up and put a nice little bow on it. Virginia gave it a valiant effort for a four possession game with 44.7 seconds. Unless something catastrophic happens from the Tar Heel standpoint. They're just not going to be able to get back to this one. Coda out of the game. 11 points and 10 assists. Coming up next on the Deuce NHL tonight. Immediately following this ball game. Nolan blocked by Zwicker, then takes it back up and jams it, and they call their final timeout. Well, you could see right there that Carolina would rather give up the layup than the three. They had extended their defense to the point where Virginia could penetrate. Show will take it with him. 30.4 seconds left in this ball game. Ron Franklin, Lynn Elmore back. At the Greensboro Coliseum. This is the last quarterfinal game of the night. 30 seconds left in it right now. Foul is called. I think Dersh is the one that they'll call it on. And a nine point lead for Carolina. So they're about to make it 10 wins in a row. Boy, it's amazing. They were 0 3 in conference play. 
if people at Chapel Hill were talking about they didn't know they'd make the NIT this year. Well, people across the country were, you know, shouting the demise of, of the Tar Heels. Now, I recognize at one point that they did have a confidence crisis, but again, that's an internal management uh, responsibility to bring those guys back to the point where they believed in themselves, and Dean Smith was able to do that. You got to give Anton Jameson and a couple of the other guys a lot of credit for sticking with the system and the program. But again, a remarkable job of balancing a team that really goes six, maybe seven deep. Coda has done such a marvelous job of stepping up, and I mentioned he looks so comfortable in doing what he's doing. That three-pointer off the mark. Nolan can't hold on to it. But Jamison, 24 points, 10 rebounds tonight. What an outstanding evening. And Alexander with 27 points for Virginia. As that ball is blocked by Coda. And blocked again. Carolina doesn't think this game is over. I think the foul came before the horn. We'll see. Now they look to the officials and say, nope, game's over. So the final, Carolina wins it by 10. The stage is set for tomorrow's semifinal round of the ACC with our score here, North Carolina, 78-68. Stay tuned for ESPN News, the NHL tonight at 1130. You're watching ESPN's presentation of Championship Week. ESPN, the worldwide leader.